Be sure to go to FlipSideGaming.com and use promo code 6 for 10% off on orders over $10 to the same at the Grizzly Gentlemen. They're both fantastic deals and help support the show. What is up, Planeswalkers? They're 6 back with some more Magic the Gathering Arena. Today we're playing Abzan Company, uh, and this is essentially a Selesnya deck that uses literally a couple of black cards. <laughs> I needed to play something for Abzan today, uh, and I had a lot of, I had technically, like, a bunch of options. Uh, I didn't like any of them. I actually deleted some other ones that I had uh, options for. I just, I, look, shut up. <laughs> I haven't figured out how to make uh, Abzan midrange just yet, but yeah. This is the deck. The point of this deck, essentially, is to just have kind of a d and style list uh, that ends up using uh, uh, Collected Company to get some extra value. The, the main point of this deck is essentially Renegade Rallier. Um, I was going to try to have an Abzan Doom Foretold deck that used Renegade Rallier, but my brain be hurt, <laughs> and I couldn't figure out how to do it properly. But yeah, so so I have that. Uh, I was going to potentially do Abzan Cats. Uh, I was also going to potentially do um, Abzan, like, full-on Abzan midrange, but that one, that one needs time. All right, we're beginning of the month we're back in the dregs of gold yeah. will i ever get rid of this probably not to be honest this hand is not great the f what the fuck is that i want this uh they mulligan i'll mulligan Yikes. Uh, I will keep this one, though. I'll get rid of the... Bugler. 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 I think this is for the secret layer. I got the secret layer, but... The option to, like, pay now, I didn't understand it. <laughs> like, I don't know if it wasn't working or if I'm just stupid, but I didn't see it. I want my fucking codes. And yes, uh, some of these I will be uh, distributing as codes, depending on if they do it separately. Thoughtsies, well, awkward. Oh, he's gone. Not great, but whatever. I saw the secondary, I guess. They didn't have an additional land. Very interesting. They kept the one lander, one lander plus thoughtsies. Cast this first. So, on my upkeep, I'll be able to draw a card, which hopefully will be a land. There you go, opponent. You got another. You got another card. Sure. I can still just attack with this if I want. I would like to take this action. Hell yeah. Even better. After the other video, I need to like be very careful about this card. Alright, and we schmork. And next turn I can like crack this fabled passage in order to get back a uh, Thali or something. Let's see, is that what I want to do? Do 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 okay, take. Where to get Rallier? I mean, it's like essentially free. I still get to attack him down a little. Sure. Let's grab a forest, I guess. Play this. You know, you know that I have to use the Jesper Icing. Jesper Icing Forest. Cool. Okay. So we're putting on Mono Black something. Uh, let's see. Yeah, same deck. My sideboard is not exactly built to beat. It, it's it's meant like there are cards that are for specific use cases. 
King of Watermelons Jerome asks, knowing everything we know about, um, er, er, no, now lore wise, what do you think is happening in the timeline where Ugin died with or without Sarkin? So I don't think Wizards is maintaining that timeline, right? I think what this question is asking is like, there's a timeline that was initially the true timeline where uh, Bolas beats Ugin, Ugin just dies, right? That was the canonical timeline. In a, in a very closed way, Sarkin was able to subvert that timeline um, and make it so that Ugin could essentially like be reborn or wasn't fully dead or whatever. And that's the current timeline. And it's still relatively enclosed. Like it's not meant to affect much. Um, but I think, I think Jerome is asking like about that timeline that has been changed. And generally speaking, I don't think that Wizards is going to like care about that timeline. I think that's just discarded. Um, however, my guess is Ugin wouldn't be able to help with the Eldrazi situation, even though I guess technically didn't help all that much. Um, and he wouldn't be there for the War of the Spark. So my assumption is if the Eldrazi didn't win, which, you know, I don't I don't think Ugin helped too much because Jace essentially just ignored him. Um, I'll keep this. Uh, I think that... I think that Bolas would have just... Uh, won the War of the Spark. And uh, Bolas would be a god. That's that's my guess. Thoughtsies. Knight of the Eban Legion. I'm gonna do one of those. I'm gonna kill this whenever I want, I swear. Gifted A Thurbo. Do one of these. Would I block this? If a player lost four. So they didn't lose four. I am fine doing that though. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine forcing them to use their mana like that. I would love to get a black source. That is not a black source. Um, so I could just get rid of this. Yeah, let's just get rid of this. See if they kill my apparition. They only get a 1-1 back, so I'm not too concerned with it. <laughs> too concerned about it. Cry of the Carnarium. Hawkward. I did not see that coming. That is for sure. Uh, that said, I can just do one of these. And push the Aetherborn. Do I want a... I think I would rather have a Scooze. Even though I don't actually have much dead. Yeah, Scooze, Scooze gets bigger. Uh, I guess I technically could have waited, but I'm fine just killing that now. Four cards, four cards. Arena. Oh, look at that. So we definitely would like to blow this up. Um, and I think I would rather... I'm definitely going to attack with this. Essentially no reason not to. They could block Fatal Push, but I don't care. Cool. Uh, I don't think I want to just put my Scoos out there to potentially die. Am I fine taking some damage in order to play Tide Ticker? I think I am. I guess technically speaking, I could have played that first. Could have stopped the block into Fatal Push, but I'm not worried about it. Another arena. Very annoying. So, green, green. I have plenty of green. Yeah, at this point, I just have to pressure them. That's fine. We play that because it has to come in tapped. And we have two eats on Scoos. 
actually now they're they're going to potentially be able to win the that's fine win the long game because they're able to to get so much value but that's why i just consume i'll consume my own stuff i don't care get in my scooped belly glint sleeve siphoner um Let's do this and this and attack with these. Do I want to attack with tie ticker as well? Sure. The flyer is more valuable to me, especially considering I can eat the tie ticker to make this bigger. So I'm not I'm not truly losing out on damage technically speaking so they get to draw another card they go down to eight this is difficult to deal with i guess another gray merchant is very bad for me fun fact they have another gray merchant let's zoom two four six we'll go down to six they'll go up to 14. I will consume. I don't have anything to do other stuff. I will just consume their graveyard as well. I might as well. Uh, I mean, really, what, you, what you're looking for here is a, a collected company. It's the most important thing to grab here. Uh, it's not terrible. It's just not great. Um... they decide to double block I'm fine with that we are going to Kinjali Sunwing here yeah we really could have used a uh... double block like that very interesting so they might just have another Grey Merchant which means I am possibly just going to die. We're down to four. So, like, I don't need the... I don't have to do much in order to... Win a knight, that's fine. Comes in tapped. We almost certainly draw. We have one card left. I mean, they could just be slow rolling me. <laughs> Which would be a little sad, but I assume that I'm going to be in an okay situation. Because they'd have to block this, which means they... No, uh, yeah, they, they need they need something here, or else they do just die. Cool. Got there. We didn't get our uh, our cool company card, but we did get there. I do, li I do like getting there. I have some uh, of my patented apple juice. I love apple juice. It's delicious. Best fruit juice. I don't care what anyone says. But Justin, what about you take that out of my face? Lemonade doesn't count. <laughs> Lemonade doesn't count as a as a fruit drink. I don't know why. I I don't make the rules. I just make them. Uh, I don't I don't know why I feel this way. This hand is too slow. I'm keeping this hand up. It's just as, if not more slow, but shut up. How about that? Zombies. Okay. For what it's worth, it might not be zombies. It could just be aggro. Zombies. Uh, theoretically, I can destroy that. <laughs> I just have to, you know, get a third land before... Hey, cool. Alright, so we have Skyclave Apparition to get rid of a true lord, like that. So yeah, we're going to Skyclave Apparition this. Or do we Knight of Autumn first? No, I think I think we Skyclave first. 
Let me just get rid of this. In the next turn, we probably collect a company. We have, like, essentially the entire deck hits, right? Other than lands and companies and Fatal Push. That's fine. They're spending a turn to do that. I'm okay with that. Like, literally, we have... Three, six, plus whatever lands are left. Non-hits here. Okay. Um. Guess I'll do it on their turn? I mean, they did, they did bludgeon me a little bit to death here. Alright, so before that actually enters, this is not exactly what I would love to see, but at the very least, I can gain some life. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, these are the rest of the cards. I was like, why? Knight of Autumn can kill us. What are you waiting for? What What's happening? I I don't understand. That's fine. Query asks, uh, personal question. Why? Why would you do this to me? <laughs> I was about to answer a question. You fool. You monster. Um, I would love a Fable Passage. No, never mind. Fable Passage does nothing for me. I would love a Fatal Push. Yes, I would like a Fatal Push. It's like a Knight of Autumn kill this Fatal Push. This, I guess? Yeah. No, this. This is a zombie. Uh, if they attack, 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 I can block like this, go up to 10, down to 4. Yeah, I'm not sure. They just attack with those, I think that is probably correct. Um, the question is, do I give up my scoos? Do I give up my scoos? I think I do, actually. I can't wait to get blown out here. Oh, another one. I was thinking about doing Abzan Zombies. That was another one I was pondering today. Anyway, Query asks, uh, Personal question, are there any strange, interesting conspiracy theories that you believe in? They don't have to be anything crazy, but something you believe without any real evidence. There is nothing I believe without evidence. Period. If I, if I do not have sufficient evidence to believe something, uh, I, I don't believe it. I, I am skeptical as hell. Like, to, to an annoying degree, uh, if you're around me for long enough, I just like, you, someone could come up to me and say something rather rather mundane, and I'd be like, oh, where, like, wh where do you find that? Like, what is your source of information? Opponent thinking long and hard about this. All right. Yeah, I think we just murder this. So I have a chump blocker. And can, like, block this. But they're probably not going to attack with this for a while. They do have this situation. I would like another land. Fable Passage would be specific or particularly good. Because then I could Fable Passage, sack it, Renegade Rally, or get back my Scoos. Oh, and since that doesn't use mana... I'd also be able to, like... It doesn't use the mana from that. Um, do I double block here? I think... I mean, I can just double block this. I lose my Murder's Rider almost certainly. But they lose an attacker as well. I do think I need to, to be open to double blocking these situations. And the reason we... Well, first of all, this is... Uh, this is for toughness. Um, but also, this, this isn't a zombie, so it doesn't get benefits from any of the other things. Uh, they have a, an active Lockthwain. They decide to use it now, which I... I guess if they have one drops, I agree with it. Um, 
So here, I think we play both. And I think we just play this as four life, which means essentially it's two life. When I could attack. No, if I, if I attacked, it should have been first. So yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. And we're just going to gain life here. And next turn I will... Three. Yeah, next turn I will try the attack. Probably with just Glint Sleeve. Alright, they're going to lock Twain now. So my assumption is that this is another land. There's not really a reason to lock Twain if you have a playable. At least not from my perspective. Okay, so they do attack in. Uh, let's see. I mean, I think we just block, block. And take three. It has to... Yeah, so they can't they can't recast this, which is nice. Yeah, let's kill those zombies. So I can't get this killed, naturally. But I kind of need... Uh, not what I wanted to see, but fine. Is that Reaver? Sure. Oh, baby, I love your way. That is exactly what we wanted to see. We get a forest. Tap. 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 Renegade Rallier. Getting back. The Scoos. This, this Scoos is huge. Um, I could technically Rallier again, but I don't think it's worth it. Um, return. I believe I can respond to that. Yeah. So they have three, yeah. Let's see if they decide to do that first. I'm gonna play Crypt Breaker. That's fine. Is this activate only if you could cast a sorcery? Um it is, but I still want to try and get them on it. They could just lock Twain here. I'm not sure, but but that that um, it was super clutch for me to get that uh, fabled passage, and that's why you write a fabled passage in this. Like, uh, Renegade Rally is great, and they can't respond with this because it's uh, anytime you can cast a sorcery, so it's just it's just free real estate. Now they can't activate a lock point. I get to gain life. This is a little bit bigger, so very very helpful. I can start like blocking these things properly. I doubt they're going to attack me. No, yeah, they're just going to Crypt Breaker, which makes a ton of sense. I'm absolutely just going to consume things. Just eat. My scoos must consume. Because we're not out of it. Like, getting a Collected Company would help. Uh, getting a Collected Company would help. Yeah, no, that's that's right. <laughs> I, I don't know my, why my brain was like... Uh, I mean, really, Company would be great. Uh, apparition is fine. Oh, I'm drawing another scoos. Well, I don't love that. Because the second Scoos is not as good as the first Scoos. Um, do I want to kind of throw away my Rallier? I wonder if, I wonder if they'll take the block on the second Scoos. I got technically three creatures I'm fine with eating in there. I'm going to look dangerously. I'm look very dangerously. I'm fine with that. Okay, so if that's what I'm going to do... One, two, three. Do I want to play the other scoots? No, because then I'd be down to my scoots. No, this is fine. 
So I'm fine with this trade. Looks like they're going to draw now, which is reasonable. Based on the, the speed that that occurred, I don't think that they have... I don't think that they have... Um, the, you know you know the card. Yeah, that one, exactly. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not too worried about these things. And I still have the main squeeze. The main squeeze. Okay. Two cards. Dreadhorn Invasion. Fine with Dreadhorn Invasion. I'm not going to consume my own things just yet. I will absolutely draw a card. Ouch. Ooh. I do like the idea of a Skyclave Apparition. I think it's just on the Crit Breaker. Stop tapping down my blue. Or my, my blue! My green. <laughs> my blue, dude! So I'll do this, hit the Crypt Breaker. I guess I could technically hit the Dread Horde Invasion, but it does hurt them, and I'm not terribly worried about it just yet. I don't think you should tap down to draw a card. Oh, okay. I see what they're doing. Coward, you're going to tap down to draw a card. Do I still just press press? Do I still just press the advantage? And I think the answer to that question is, uh, heck yeah, bud. Yeah. Because at this point, I have the better board presence, and I want to keep that value there. So this puts them at half life. This can become a 2-2, but I don't care too much about it. Yeah, I'd rather this die. And I will actually play this Scoos. I still have two Scoos activations. Alright, they're down to five. Locked one here, puts him down to four. They currently only have one creature. And if... Yeah, if I killed this, they'd have two creatures to block with. Felmire Knight. Down to three. They do have two blockers. But they are dead. Yeah, they die on the upkeep. I attack with everything. They have, they literally have to block these, uh, and then they die on the upkeep. Let's see. I'm not sure I need this actually. I do like this, and I do like these. I don't think Cabal's worth it. Even though it's life gain, it's not the same kind of life gain. Rundy Sabian asks, What direction would you like to see the magic story taken in? Uh, I feel like that's a relatively easy question for me. Um, essentially, I, I the peak the peak recent magic story was um, Ixalan. I thought that the web stories for that were very good. 
Um, what do I want to do here? I think I want to do this. Then my opponent should attack first. There you go. Because if they don't play anything I would rather kill, I'm definitely going to kill this. Yeah, see, I'm definitely going to kill this. And we pass. And I can sack this if I need to. Just to, um... Just to kill. I will take the two, thank you. Um, but yeah, like, I really enjoyed the Ixalan story. I think uh, the characterization of Jace and Vraska was fantastic. I, I liked the pacing of that story, um, or of those stories, I guess. Um, I liked the characterization. I liked uh, the amount that they fleshed the world in without, like, detracting from the overarching, like, the, the main part of the story. Um, I would love to draw land here. I guess 23 lands is not enough. Psych. Never didn't have it, baby. I would like to gain four, please. Are they considering killing my selfless here? That's what I thought. And we attack. Now I'd like a green source, specifically. I'd like green source into collected company. That would be... Magnifique. If a creature died this turn. Interesting. I'm just going to take the four, I think. And kill this four. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Bruh. One damage is not does not matter. I'm just gonna pass there. Uh, next turn, I can play Scooz if I need to. Or what's funny is I can sacrifice Selfless Savior, uh, play this, and get Selfless Savior back. <laughs> Ooh, I do like that. Play this. Black, black. So I can play this and Scooz. So I shall do that, and I should have. I should have. Force the tap. I should have played Scoos first, to be honest. We still only have one green source. So it's not the best, obviously. Uh, is it worth attacking with an Inspiring Cleric here, though? Um, I don't know. Yeah. It's a one-for-one one trade. Those are both zombies that can get bigger, so I'm fine with this. Come on, coward, do it. Do it, coward. Uh, yeah, I just, I really liked that, that era of story, storytelling. I, I honestly don't know why Wizards gave up on it. Like, I feel like, I feel like early on when they were talking about how the story was so, um, accessible and, like, the, the players were actually, like, engaging with the story. Thank you. How could you? I'm indestructible. Master of what? Uh... But then, like, out of... It felt like out of nowhere, they were like, yeah, people just aren't engaging with the story online. Like, wh what are you talking about? Like, having the story on the Wizards website was fantastic. Maybe it just cost them too much money and they weren't making any money back, but, like, I loved it. I hate you. Uh, that's fine. The plan is just to attack again and hope they kill my Inspiring Cleric. Come on, do it. Kill my Inspiring Cleric. Do it, do it. I mean, we're, we're going full on in. Come on, do it. Do it. Kill the cleric. You know you want to. Coward. That's fine. I have time. They have a lot of, a lot of uh, cards in hand. They just don't have a lot of... Uh... Never mind. I was going to say they don't have a lot of mana to do stuff with. Zombie. Um, I'm going to, fun fact, uh, attack again. 
please. Thank you. Press the advantage. Push them to the limit. Yeah, that's that's where I'd like to see the magic story go. Um, in terms of like what I would like to see happen, I don't know. Like, I legitimately don't know what I want to see out of like an overarching story. Um, who was it? One of the characters was talking about like bigger things. Was it Kaya? No, it wasn't Kaya. Yeah, all oh, that's fine. Sure, yep. I'm gonna do one of these. And I'll go ahead and put this back into my into play. Thank you very much. One of the one of the planeswalkers was talking some nonsense about like how like crazier things are gonna happen, like more dangerous than all of the stuff that you, any of you know about. So I'm not entirely sure. Uh, do I want to just collect a company now? I guess I can just wait until their turn. Yeah. Yeah. Then I'll do it in response to them casting something. Never mind, they're going to castle. Uh, castling Kingside is not a great move in this specific board configuration. Uh, I think they really should have just uh, pushed their pawn advantage over on the queen side. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. I am playing a chess a little online, but I'm bad. I will probably record it for um, Six and Stuff at some point. All right, well, let's uh, go ahead and company collectively. Bruh. How could you do this to me? Are we gonna kill my screws now? Whatever, dude. Whatever, dude. Let's see if I care. Thank you. That's potentially dumb. It's potentially the case that I should have done this. Uh, just because this flies. I could have also. Just grab the scoos. Game, please. I mean, I'm at 20, so I'll absolutely cast Inspiring Cleric as well. And the plan is just to kill them with the, the Sunwing. Just hit them to death with the Sunwing. Never mind, they killed it. Oh, they're at three. So they can they can block three of my damage, gain three, two, four, six. That still has them dead, right? They block here. Right, they gain three, that's six, two, four, six. That puts them at dead if they don't have another piece of interaction. I'm gonna go for the win here. If they have another piece of interaction, I'm boned. Yes! Bishop to e7 checkmate. <laughs> I was like, wait. <laughs> I think I have the white pieces in this weird world that I'm constructing. I don't actually remember. <laughs> All right. Cool. So let's talk a little bit more about the deck. So far, I've gotten some relatively positive comments about uh, the location of the deck deck. Cool. Good. Oh, I'm so close. I want the, I want the happy spinning hedron. I th mm, wizards. Ugh. Ugh. Man, uh, whatever. They're both they're both bad. All right. Okay. So, so yeah, as you could see, uh, the deck idea was essentially you know play play some cool cards <laughs> that had some some kind of interaction, and then like hopefully you win with value. Uh, we've got three selfless saviors. Uh, this card's great because it protects uh, any of our more important creatures, uh, but also it can trigger Renegade Rallier uh, such that like we can sacrifice this uh, to get uh, to use Renegade Rallier just in case we like really need a Thalia or a Scavenging Goose or something like that. Or we could just um, sacrifice it on one of our creatures, uh, attack with that creature so that we can maintain a larger creature, 
and then we can Renegade Rallyer um, play this again. Or we can sack this on one of our creatures to give it Instructable, play Renegade Rallyer, get this back, sack it immediately on another one of our creatures, and then attack with those without the fear of them dying. Um, I'm not sure how often that will occur, but it's a thing that can happen. Fatal Push uh, is another thing that uh, Selfless Squire helps with, Selfless Savior helps with. Uh, and Fatal Push, uh, we get to just, uh, you know, kill a thing, or uh, if something died, like this or Fable Passage, we get to get more things. It's cool. Um, Thalia, Stalia, we didn't actually see her this game. Uh, any, uh, any of these games, like, do what she needs to do, because she's she's more of an anti-control card. Two Tide Thakers. Uh, Tide Thakers are great. It leaves a body behind, forces your opponents not to be able to do things. It's It's cool. Uh, Glency of Siphoner is kind of the only other reason we were playing black here. Initially, I think I did have more black cards in here, but just over time, I've just made it more and more just like, hey, what are my favorite white cards in Arena? <laughs> so that's kind of what I went uh, down to. But you did see that Siphoner is relatively decent for the fact that she can give you some card draw, even if it's not a ton. But also she has Menace, so it's annoying uh, for your opponents to deal with. Scoos, it's Scoos. What do you want me to say about it? All of these cards I've kind of talked about already. Uh, Skycliff Apparition is a great way to have creature removal that is in itself a creature because it helps you with co Collecting Company and Militia Bugler. Being able to find this off of either of these cards is great because we want to have we want to maximize our hits for Collecting Company while still having some way of interacting with our opponent's board. Another way of doing that is with Knight of Autumn. And as you can see, uh, in the main deck at least, all of our creatures, uh, besides Renegade Rallyer, have uh, power two or less, which works really nice with Militia Bugler. Um, even a Murder Rider, right? We can grab that off of uh, off of Bugler and kill something with it. It's fantastic. Renegade Rallyer, like, is the is the real reason like I put this deck together. But I feel like there's barely any Revolt cards that are good. Yeah, like it, it's re it's Rallyer and Stockpile. I guess in Fatal Push. But like, it feels like there aren't any other good cards. And for what it's worth, I don't actually know if there were good Revolt cards. So I'm literally looking it up right now. Revolt. Excuse me? Um, Aid from the Cowl, Call for Unity. Both are rares that we didn't get. Green Wheel Liberator, another rare that we didn't get. <laughs> we got like... A third of our revolt cards. Like, what is this, dude? Wait, are you serious? Is it wait, is this a card that was actually printed for Yeah, what? I don't understand. They added none of the rares with revolt. I'm just I'm not gonna say anything about it. Because if I did, it would be a 50 minute long time tirade. Uh, anyway, this is the meta base. Fable Patch is helpful. The sideboard is kind of cool. Hope for Gearper. Uh, Hope of Gearper is uh, what I thought would be a cheeky way of dealing with the uh, uh, combo decks or control decks because you get to you hit them with it. It has you know relatively hard to block, uh, and then you get to sacrifice it to make it so that they can't do anything. But you also get to just bring it back with Renegade Rallyer. Uh, you can use it as a sack thing for a Fatal Push, which is also quite nice. You can get it with Bugler and Company. Uh, Join the Magistrate is just haha funny. You can't catch things from your graveyard, which is funny. Uh, Remorseful, Remorseful Cleric is a creature way that we can get rid of our opponent's graveyard. And what's really nice, it's kind of the point of this deck, is the fact that you can sack Remorseful Cleric to hit your opponent's graveyard, Renegade Rallyer to get it back, and now you can you can keep the two one body. Right, this is something that I've talked about in deck tech, uh, in deck tech, in Death and Taxes um, videos before, is that you like Remorseful Cleric because it can just get the graveyard out, uh, but then you lose the body, right? Like you want the two one body, um, and it's not it's not something you can use again. Unless, of course, you're playing with Rallier. So uh, I definitely like that. Sun Cleanser, uh, essentially it's actually here for energy, but I didn't come up against either of those. Inspiring Cleric, life game, baby. <laughs> and then Cabal, uh, cue any decks that play non-creatures. That's essentially it. Um, yeah, very fun. Very fun. Uh, I don't know if I'll be playing this for a video. I might because it is a little different, but who knows? Anyway, I'd like to thank my lovely patrons, especially um, <laughs> Enigmatic Twister down there. <laughs> I see you. Uh, Fogwind, Malik, and Ballot Hair for the continued support. If you'd like to join them and support the show, you find links in the description below. Hope, of course, you've enjoyed this video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And, of course, until next time, I will be one.